Activating meridians. Alignment. Instability in field. Negative. Charge aligning matrix field. Positive. Coordinates reached, Commander. Activate the Sade field. Activations of multidimensional engines. Launch communications probe. Power levels to maximum. Activate all dimensional levels of communication. Communication established. The voice you hear is known as Bob. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. This is the last slave planet in the galaxy. Under all agreement, 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 under all rights, 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 under galactic law, 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 we now proclaim this planet free, 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 free. The dissension of the true human consciousness has begun. Energizing Shambhala Diamonds. The men, women and children of this planet are now set free. Free, 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 free. Red fields activated. You have already reached Activate Shambhala Diamond. Critical mass. Good day, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Dark City Show on Dark City Radio, as usual. Um, we slot in, we fill up the gaps, and we appear and warm up the seats. So, um, yeah, that's what it's about. We've got quite a few of us on the crew tonight. Um, I'll read them in reverse order. Um, Luke, is uh, Paul Luke's with us. We've got our Robo, we've got Bob Earthwise, we've got Pradsner and Cali. Uh, we have our Dawn of the Dark City. And uh, we've also got with us a guy who's going to be doing another show, uh, which if you look on the schedule, you'll see blocked out. It says, um, and it says something like, what does it say? Let me have a look, eh? It says slot taken, big green slot taken, and that'll be between 9 and 11 on a Friday. Um, so I'm going to bring uh, Chris is... Um, uh, Miles Crisp, excuse me, I got it the wrong way around then, Miles. I'll bring Miles in a, in a couple of moments and he'll, he can tell you what he's about and what he's doing. We've also got um, John, John Wilton, or Wilson, Wilton Smith, who I've seen today from over in Liverpool. He's going to be coming on doing a, a Liverpool vibe type local thing, but, you know, with, with, a, with a, a Liverpool twist to it, which is pretty cool. We've got now uh, the permaculture lady, I can never get her name right, Nette, Netty, Netta, excuse me if I've pronounced it wrong. Uh, Nairis Titchener. Thank you, Dom, you saved me again. What she just said, right, Nairis Titchener. Or, or Netty to her friends. Is it? Netty to her friends, right. Nairis, I'll try and get it right. Well, I'm learning to pronounce people's names. Let me try. So, Nairis, is that right, Nairis? Uh, and she's That's right. She's coming on Dawn Show tomorrow, and then she's going to be doing a show. And that's basically around permaculture. Well, it's not just permaculture, but gardening, permaculture, and that kind of stuff, alternatives, 
and I suppose um, the tried and trusted techniques that still, you know, like sticking a seed in some soil it does work well, you know. So that up and coming, uh, I've missed another one out. I know I have. Um, yeah, Sarah, who's been with us um, helping out with um, Dark City, that's pretty cool. She's going to be bringing in a lady, we hope, to do herbalists. Um, we should be able to ring in and she'll, she'll give you the stuff you need if you've got ailments and stuff like that. I'm looking, I'm, I'm quite excited about it. I'm excited all the time. Everybody knows, but it's good to get that where we can actually be integrating the positive solutions um, immediately. Anyway, that's my bit of a waffle. Thanks to everyone for helping out over the uh, the last week. As usual, um, we have moved along, and uh, welcome to all the newcomers, listeners and uh, hosts and, and engineers and everybody else who's come. And everybody else who knows me. I want world peace. Right, <laughs> okay. Uh, so Miles, Miles Crisp, uh, who's joined us. Uh, Miles, do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're going to be doing on a, a Friday night? Now, that's on a Friday after the 15th. After the 15th. The reason for that is we're going to fish. That's our official launch day. We have heard, we have a, we've managed to get a communication through, through Rupert who channeled um, the Lord, uh, excuse me, the Count Vosto, um, and he picked up, the chat, and he's told him through the channel that we are actually officially going live, officially live. Now, we are live now, of course, but not officially. So we're going to officially go live after the 15th, and Miles will be joining us on a Friday. On the 22nd. On the 22nd. There you go, Miles. Take it away, mate. All right. Well, basically, I uh, I was a college student until I figured out that there's no point in spending $100,000 of my money that I don't have getting a loan to have a degree so that I could make $30,000 teaching when I'm already making that, um, just doing general odd jobs. So uh, I guess you can call me a college student, but I'm really not. I've been uh, interested in um, ancient civilization since I was a little kid. Uh, started with the work of Robert Schock and um, John Anthony West with the water erosion redating on the Sphinx. Um, Long and short, one of my big things is I believe there's some sort of global uh, maritime culture going around the world before the end of the last ice age. I don't know if it was just one culture or it could have been a series of them. Um, another good example I, I usually cite is uh, the Australian Aborigines sailing over to the island of Papua that was connected to Australia about 60,000 years ago. They had to do that on on some sort of ships, they wouldn't be able to just swim it. You can't even see the coast from uh, uh, from East Timor, for example. Um, you wouldn't be able to see the coast with line of sight. So uh, that's one of the big things I, I'm interested in. Um, more contemporary history, I can go on about uh, uh, the Roman Empire, um, the Gracchi brothers, things like that. Um, I know a little bit of Latin and uh, English grammar and things like that that would probably bore everyone to tears. So, well, uh, you could you could teach me all about my grammar, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> you can help me. You can help us. Well, me, well, you're an Englishman. You're supposed to already have it down. I thought you all talked better than oh, me. Oh, now come on, I can't. Come on, Miles. There's an historian. You you you'll probably be aware <laughs> that all the English were murdered uh, a long time ago. There are no English people left in uh, in uh, in England, of course. And there are there are many people living who believe that Christian. Uh, um, uh, English, but they'll be Romans now. Um, so yeah, uh, I thought it was Anglo-Saxons that came in and killed the uh, the Celts that were there before the Romans came in. Uh, well, they've, 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 there's none left. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dispute you there. I have difficult remembering my own birthday, my old. I'm I, I've, I'm just curious. I've, I mean, I've I've only heard the standard paradigm. That you know, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes came in sometime around the six, seven, eight hundreds. Um, onto the island of Britannia. That's all I've heard. I've, I've never really looked into it. Yeah, there was um, treaties made. Uh, they agreed, basically, they were allowed to, they had a settlement there, and they were, I can't remember the dates, man, but they basically they butchered them um, on the morning after their, would be like their Christmas, I suppose. I think it was uh, the solstice. Uh, the winter, after, the night, uh, after the winter solstice, they butchered them as they lie there sleeping. So that was the last of them. Uh, the um, what we would have known to be, I suppose they were Norsemen, 
uh, original settlers. They were that's what they were classed as. Uh-huh. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not an historian, Miles. But one thing you did mention um, was about the trade, um, the sea trade. Uh, I've looked at, I've been up to Iceland and Denmark, and uh, the amount of they, they don't seem to be in in any any doubt that there was mm, worldwide trade going on. The mm-hmm. ice axe found in the um, um, the temple on the island of Gozo um, could have only been produced in Greenland. It's made out of uh, green marble, so somebody had to bring that from Greenland um, down to um, down through down down to all the way down through Europe if they weren't doing it by by boat, and, and you'd have to get somehow to and from Greenland. You know, there's no... you'd have to be on a boat at some point in that journey. Yeah, exactly, Miles. So that that would that would interest me. It's rather it's rather interesting actually because we've just been watching half a video from Graham Hancock. You f- familiar with him, Miles? Oh yes, I am. Yeah, yeah thanks, and uh, that sign in the seal. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this particular one is about the uh, the city sub. Um, um, you know, un- underwater cities that they're they're finding off the coast of of India, mm-hmm. and it, it strikes me that um, that Hancock Hancock's actually you know makes a lot of sense in saying well the water level was an awful lot lower, uh, so there was an enormous amount um, more land Indeed. that that would have been populated, and we tend to populate along. Uh, the edges of water, rather than rather than miles from water. So, exactly, it it makes a lot of sense. All of these big flood myths and so on. It would have seemed like the whole world was being inundated if all of the quote civilized settled world was being inundated uh, by by rising waters from the from the end of the ice age. You might also be interested in the uh, copper in the United States around Michigan and the Great Lakes. Um, 90% of the copper that was excavated, it's some of the purest copper in the world, naturally. Um, We can't identify it. Native American sites, burial mounds, things like that, only account for about 10% of the copper that was known to have been excavated from around Michigan. Where did the 90% of that copper go? Right. Uh, Well, do you know the... the um, you know, I hark back to India again because uh, because they were amazing metallurgists. Yes. Um, and and they produced all kinds of incredible metals. A, a lot of which, you know, a lot of the the current uh, metallurgical knowledge and so on originated in in India. And they they were amazed to find things like iron that didn't rust and and all that kind of thing. Are you talking about that iron pillar that apparently doesn't rust? It's been standing for a thousand years or so. Yep, that's one example. There was also yeah. a big lintel from some temple that the British thought, oh, well, we'll just go and have that, but they <laughs> couldn't move it. Hmm. Well, um, there's also a temple that it? depicts an ear of corn, too, and they're not supposed to have known what corn was. Hmm. My interest um, was sparked with the ballast. Um, that was being found, which was which was um, Viking, uh, or as we call them, Norsemen, termed as the Vikings. They um, the ballast has turned up all over the world, um, literally. Uh, as um, uh, New Zealand, you mentioned earlier, I do believe it's been found in New Zealand. The ballast, uh, and when it is found, it's normally moved quite quickly. Um, and I'm not saying it's a conspiracy, but I, I have no idea why. This happens. There's been a few cases, and you can you can research this. Um, there's videos and stuff on YouTube that this Viking ballast, and the, the reason for that is it, the, the stones. They can identify where the stones came from. So the the ships, the longboats, were filled with stone um, pebbles, um, quite large, but you know enough for perhaps one man to carry. Obviously, you wouldn't make them too heavy to carry because you need to unload them to give the boat stability. And then they unloaded that. Uh, and loaded with goods and went back. And it's that tracing of that ballast around the world is, is further evidence to say that there was um, massive trade. I mean, worldwide trade was going on. If we are, um, if we believe the historical story as we've been told, um, then why, why, why explains this? 
it, is this is another half to see Clark's unexplained mysteries of the world. Um, it, it seems to be that we keep having more and more mysteries and more and more things that we can't solve because we keep following the orthodox path what what history has told us. And I'm sure, and Paul, you being, um, excuse me, I keep calling you Paul now for some reason, Miles. Um, you, Miles, um, more learned in this. Um, the history, if I'm not correct, is written by those who were victorious in war in most cases. Either victorious in war or victorious in politics, whoever gets the right to history books. Yeah. Good point, man. I never thought politically, yes, as well. And I suppose the ones who were educated in that language which get the books printed. I mean, I suppose there may have been other documented evidence um, which has never been passed on, which I suppose is to be left to people like you to dig out and find and patch in the pieces now. Mm -hmm. And then we well, find a... things like that that curious map that uh, that shows the whole outline of Antarctica, which is which has never been seen because it's always been covered in, in ice as far as our history relates. Yeah, the Piri Reese map. That's one. Yeah, I've looked at that and um, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I don't think it shows all of Antarctica, but it definitely shows some of it and it seems to show it even being connected by a land bridge to South America. So the antiquity would be almost before anatomically modern Homo sapiens even. I mean, we're almost getting back into into, into tens of millions of years ago with uh, a map like that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's. It does. It's not just me. Uh, it's not that you've just blown a hole in history, really. There, haven't you, Miles? Well, it's one of the holes. There's a German uh, scientist, uh, archaeologist, uh, Michael Cremo, talks about this and. I personally don't think Michael Cremo is um, completely here on this planet Earth with us, but he does do some good research. And there's a German uh, archaeologist in 1915 that found a uh, anatomically modern Homo sapien skeleton in stone that was geologically dated to about one and a half million years ago. The bones were taken to a university in Germany and later, uh, well, basically they lost them. And there was a carbon uh, dating done on it in the... 40s or the 50s i think and anyway the, the guy who did the dating was uh actually fired from his uh position because he was fraudulent he was uh falsifying radiocarbon data um but according to that uh it was not one and a half million years old and there's no other way to test it because it was uh destroyed in a fire i think after world war ii so i don't remember when the guy was uh testing this but um yeah there's um there's, there's a lot we don't know, and uh, another uh, good little tidbit is uh, all the uh, human remains from Lucy and Australopithecines up to Homo neanderthalensis, all of these bones could fit in the back of a pickup truck. That's how much evidence we have. So from that tiny amount of evidence, um, we've now, oh, I don't know the right word in here, we, we've... We tried to reconstruct the human genome and evolution and teaching it um, as, uh, well, that, that, that's the paradigm that they have. In, um, um, Extrapolated is the word you're looking for. Ah, yeah, the yeah. word. They've extrapolated this entire uh, mindset um, that they've been teaching us through colleges and universities to lead us to believe that's how it is. Where I'm sure there's a much more evidence than a pickup truck. Um, to support an alternative historical. Well, I'm just saying that's how much they've been able to dig up so far. Like everything they've dug up could fit in a six by six by two foot area. Um, yeah. yeah I'm saying they, they've actually dug up a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, evidence like, I mean, just looking at, like I say, the, the, the ballast in this, there's loads of it. It's all over the place. Uh -huh. um, and, and there's more evidence there, just in that, than there is, you know, what what makes the evidence. Again, I think it's it, what's politically who it serves. I think you might have to add religious in there as well as political. Well, that's well, the I other. I think you've only got to look at the University of East Anglia and climate change, and you realise that actually there's a there's a whole lot of fraud going on in in science. In any case, then then we go back to someone like Robert. 
Maxwell and and any electronics guy will tell you about Maxwell's laws, which are all about field theory and electronics. Well, <clears throat> Maxwell actually worked all these laws out in four dimensions. And then his two assistants, Heaviside and Gibbs, came along and thought, oh, no, that's all too, too complicated and changed it over to vectors to three dimensions. And whereas Maxwell's science actually accounted for the whole solar system and how it worked and, and everything, all kinds of stuff, uh, all of that got lost as soon as they dropped it down to, uh, to, to vector, to three dimensions. And I think this happens an awful lot in, in science, that people are after a name for themselves or... or uh, and, and this is without even taking into account the uh, the political manipulations with science and history. I think you find that, that there are an awful lot of egoic manipulations as well. It was the University of Oxford that uh, did the uh, Pendleton Man hoax, wasn't it? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, that was a joke, just so that the British could have their own, uh, you know, they were jealous of the French and the Germans with Cro-Magnon Man and Neanderthal Man, respectively. <laughs> I actually have an anthropology textbook that still lists Pendleton Man as one of the uh, lineages of Homo sapiens. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's from 1923. <laughs> we found a couple well, it's, of... It's so sad that they have to invent this stuff, just, just you know... But we feel a bit left out, so we'll fake it, you know? We have the technology. We can build one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's the repeaters, isn't it? Uh, uh, these people who repeat stuff. And I'm not having a go at them. Uh, I mean, the National Health Service is riddled with it. Um, the, it's what we're taught. You know, we're taught this. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm picking the health service out there. Um, you know, food and, you know... We're taught to live a certain way. The people who, who are in the health service are taught to treat us a certain way. And then often they're getting, I suppose, having the fingers pointed at them and bashed around a little bit because they don't know. Well, you, you, can't, you can't start picking on something because they don't know something because you know it. I mean, you we've remember seen... eggs? I mean, eggs were healthy and then they weren't healthy and then the whites were good and the yolks were good. And every five years they change their mind just on eggs. Yeah, well, well, of course, I live, I've had um, 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 bird disease and, and cow disease and, and, and chicken disease um, because I live in England. I mean, you get salmonella from the eggs and you get a spongy brain from the cows. Um, your feet drop off, apparently, if you eat, you get hoof and horn disease. Um, <laughs> you know, I've had everything. I mean, this, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm immortal. I have actually decided now that I'm immortal. I've survived everything. Um, I've survived AIDS. Um, I've decided. I've de I, I, I actually, you know, you might all find this hard to believe, but I actually survived past the heavy mass object that was coming from the back of the sun. Uh, I actually survived it, uh, and, and now I'm living in the year um, 2013. Now, according to the Gregorian number catchers, um, that's that's it. You know, of course, for many people, they are not existing now because. When they reached the number 99999, it didn't click over back to zero again. And of course, they dematerialized and they're no longer. Now, that's preposterous, isn't it? What in the <laughs> world are you talking about? Well, exactly, man. I mean, if we listen to all these things, you know, we've got an heavy mass object that's coming to go and get us. It's going to destroy the planet. Um, we've got um, the eggs are going to kill us. If you eat meat, it's going to kill you. If you eat you know, chicken is going to kill you. I mean, it's just a total mishmash of the fear factor in my mind. Um, it really is. Um, of course, if you feed chickens to fish and then feed fish to cows and then feed cows to, to chickens. Well, they were might... feeding cows to other cows for a while there. Well, you're, you're going to get a bit of a problem, aren't you? I mean, again, I noticed mm. this. You mentioned about the textbooks being wrong. Um, there's two basic bacteria within aquaponics, um, Spira Samoa and Spira, oh, Spira, Spira Samoa. No, no, that's a disease of the spine. Anyway, they'll come to me. Um, and that was done through American research. They actually found that they got them wrong. Um, 
The, the, and the English textbooks haven't, they haven't changed them yet. So that's one of the things, immediately when I'm there, and I'm trying to um, instruct teachers on how to use aquaponics throughout the national curriculum, because it is a, a cross-curriculum activity, and those receive the maximum amount of funding nowadays, um, you've got to argue with them first that the knowledge they've got is incorrect, even such on a, on a, small, a small scale. When you're so, talking about ag, um, aquaponics, are you, uh, is that what we call in the states uh, hydroponics? No. Where you're growing? Okay. No, no. Um, aquaponics is a cross between hydroponics and aquaculture. Aquaculture being fish farming. Aye. Okay. Yeah? Um, now, if you get a conventional fish farm, these actually create quite a lot of tox toxic waste, really, or, or at least unfriendly to the environment. Because it's a monoculture activity, you don't have the diversity that's usually necessary for an ecosystem? Um, well, that's part of it, but, but the major part of it is when they keep the fish in such close, confined um, quarters, Orders, yeah. Yeah, and, and then they have to feed them um, medication, uh, you know, from produced um, with hormones, for the growth hormones in them. Uh, and also giving them um, things like antibiotics and the fish version. So because they get ill, um, they do get ill. Now, so you've got a byproduct. You've got an unfriendly waste product there. Um, now, within uh, aquapon, uh, excuse me, uh, hydroponics, uh, the growing of plants, you end up with having to flush the systems, and the waste from those systems is is heavy saturated nitrate. A fertilizer from the chemical industry. Um, so you've got the, the medical um, industry on one side and, and the petrochemical industries on the other, who are both making money out of, of you know out of these systems. If you put the two together, so you take your fish farming and your aquaculture and you put it with hydroponics, then the fish produce the nutrients. I was going to say, because those nitrates could be recycled. I mean, that's essentially all um, chemical fertilizers are. Most no, well, what actually happens is eventually you get a, a build-up because the, the plants take up different nutrients mm -hmm. um, through the growth cycle. So it will change. So if you get, let's say, boron. I'm just picking that out of the air. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, let's say they're not taking up any boron. Well, you'll get far too much boron. You'll still have nitrate there, but there'll be too much boron to nitrate. So um, it, you have to flush the systems. You, you know, you, 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 top them up, you top them up with water so far, then that gets flushed. Now, where it goes to, you've had blooming effects taking place in North America and Canada, spirulina starting to grow because of heavy nitrates. Um, now, there's not a problem with spirulina if it's harvested and used, but if it's left unchecked, um, mm -hmm. It can completely devastate. Uh, it'll just leave it dead. Literally, it'll 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 it'll, it'll destroy it. The fish will die. The entire ecosystem will be destroyed. Um, and over a long period of time, of course, it would return. So a lot of people argue that spirulina may be a, a natural system, um, a natural event. You know, when it does this, but a lot would argue you wouldn't have those heavy nitrates and it wouldn't be as bad because those are coming now uh, and leaking from even into the water table. So it's definitely from agriculture is it, a part to, to blame. I wouldn't say the solely to blame, but it's part of it. And if you look at how spirulina is produced, it, you will see it's a very similar way to how aquaponics works. Um, with a couple more stages, and I have a very tiny system I built here and, and perfected in Manchester in a little tiny backyard. Uh, if you add a couple more stages to that, I could literally grow food uh, out of my own urine and excrement. Uh -huh. Now, it sounds a bit, Ugh. and but when you look at this, it, you know, in the long term, things break down, and uh, and, and that, that's that's it. And my energy could be used to crank a pump, uh, manpower, and I would get far more protein, vegetable and animal protein, out of the system than I would burn up turning the pump. It reminds me of that uh, meat product they made in Japan last year that's made from human excrement. 
Right. You know, don't go there, man. <laughs> don't go there with it. Yeah. I know that's what a lot of people have. From, an issue. from public effluent sewage treatment, they've actually figured out a way to actually turn it into a meat product because, after all, there is a lot of protein in there. Are yeah, you familiar with quinoa? Do you, do you know what quinoa is? I've heard the word, but I don't know what it is. Right. It's a, it's a very, very healthy grain that, that you can eat because it's got all kinds of wonderful uh, minerals in it. And okay. the interesting thing about quinoa is that it grows higher than any other food plant known to man. At higher altitude. At higher altitude. Right. And it, it grows on, on soil that is very very poor for minerals and and what scientists have, have determined is that is that quinoa actually transmute transmutes some elements into other elements so that it has the minerals that it needs to grow how clever is that is that? Not, is that not the plant that's made itself roundup resistant in the cornfields in the states uh well it's i don't know it's quite likely to be roundup resistant no because it's Spoiling all the crops there because you know they expect to spray Roundup and it kill everything. And this one plant has developed a resistance, and now when they harvest, it's full of this other nutritious plant, but it's not corn, so they're kind of stuffed with their harvest. Nature getting its own. <laughs> it's funny how it's funny how nature does these things, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, yeah. It's just well. It, it's not surprising, really, when you think about it, but, you know, for everything man does, nature has an equal and opposite answer, and it will get its own way in the end. It always will. Certainly it will. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we know we win, and there's a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to listen to some more of Mouse's uh, alternative or, or um, broader take on history. I was just going to say that was an amazing rabbit hole we've just gone down, led into it by miles there, weren't it? I can't even remember where we got there. Was it Cro-Magnum Man? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're famous for on the Dark City, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, we do it, go off on some tangents. It is good stuff, Miles. Uh, I mean, I must admit. Yeah, the yeah. chat's just gone off into Fibonacci numbers at the moment. Uh, uh, they're all asking what Fibonacci's are. But um, can I just, before you uh, do, they, can I just pick up on... Yep. on on um, eat shit, right? Um, <laughs> right, because he's coming up and I can't help it. He's going through our little chat box. Look, I know a lot of people with with the idea of, of um, aquaponics, uh, especially, uh, and I, what I've suggested there. Um, but nearly all you, you, the food you eat is actually grown from poo. Just so you all know that, this is not anything different. And I'm not actually talking about eating your own poo or drinking your own urine. In fact, I don't want to go down there again. And that's one trip we've been down once too often. So, yeah, it, it's a, what I'm actually trying to point out is if, if push comes to shove, um, we can actually live without creating any waste. The waste can be organic and, and useful again. That's, that's my point. Uh, and, that, and in fact, it, almost that, all the soil that you're growing in is at least worm poo, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah we live off the exactly. day aquaponics, of the day. Aquaponics is the only way you can actually grow um, organic hydro. Okay? Hydroponics is not organic. It's not organic. Where aquaponics is organic. So that's it's a closed thing. loop system, isn't it? That's the thing about aquaponics. It's a closed loop system, so there is no waste at the end. You want the waste is fed back in there. and feeds the plants. You're hundred percent right. It is a closed loop system. I mean, I, that's kind of my bit of terminology to describe these closed loop. I don't know if other people use it, um, but he explains it really well. It really does. Excuse me. But what a lot of people don't grasp is they see hydro, hydroponics stuff, and they immediately think it's organic. It isn't organic. The, the nutrients that are being used up to date, well, up to about six months ago, I'm not bang up to date with it, there was not an organic nutrient available. The problems with all the organic nutrients, when put in a circulative system, they start to ferment. 
that's the problem with it. Or not a problem, you know, like I say, it is solvable with an aquaponic. So if you're thinking you want to go down that, that organic route, then hydroponics is not the way or, or the, we'd, think, we'd think about it. Personally, I think all these minerals do come from Earth, uh, and that if, as long as it comes from Earth, then it is uh, organic. So that's my angle on it. I just wanted to make sure we'd, we'd covered that. I didn't want people to think that I sit here and grow things out of my poo. It's not <laughs> <laughs> but you could if you wanted to. And well, I, you know, I do use worm poo um, because I have a little wormery that deals with the waste of any plants that I've had. Um, they get consumed by that. Those worms, when I get abundant, and the idea was to freeze them, chop them up and feed them to the fish. Uh, but to be honest now, um, a local fisherman takes them off me and gives me um, plant, um, fish food. The fish, so that works even better now. Um, he gets his hobby, uh, and the fish get it. So it, it is a. I say these things can be community based. Anyway, we we don't need to go right down that rabbit hole. Um, that can be decayed. Well, I did discover about compost today, though. That interestingly, nettles are great for for compost or making a, a juice for for compost, but they're a bit short on on phosphates. phosphates. Whereas, whereas mullen, nettles, yeah, great for yeah. compost, but short you need, on phosphates. You need twenty percent nettle to to eighty percent comfrey. Ah, uh, well, comfrey if you've got it, but mullen also has lots of phosphorus in it. Yeah, it's low on nitrates but high in phosphorus. And if so you put the two together, well, we go. There you go. Good muck. <laughs> yeah, and you need you'd need some potassium, which is pot ash. Eum, which yes. is which is made, which is basically um, burnt wood. Ashes. Ashes. Yeah, so but only wood. If if you're going to be throwing plastics or coal or yeah. anything, any rubbish on your fire, then don't be adding it to your compost. Have an organic fire, and then you'll have organic oh, ash to go in your oh, organic ash. garden. Yep. <clears throat> but, untreated. But untreated if. Uh, wood. Uh, but if you're throwing plastic and all kinds of crap in there, well, why why garden organic? You know, people people abuse fires terribly. Well, <laughs> my prajna gets passionate about fire, but that's a whole other rabbit hole that we can go down another day. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a message. Who's this? I've got a message. Somebody messaging me. Oh. Right. Um, all right, where am I? Miles. Say again. See. Go on, go Sorry, on. Sorry, Bob's getting a message. Oh. Yeah, no, I think we all just got a message from somewhere there. I don't know what quite happened, but no worries. Uh, it might have been Skype, just having a little thing. I had two or three pop up straight away. So, um, right, where have we got? Where are we at? Where are we up to? Um, right now on. The... You're listening no, to I... Dark City Radio. Well, well, you you kind of read my mind then again. You just stare at me. All right. I know it's a collective, the consciousness, and it belongs to no one, but just leave me my bit of space. Right. Um, you might have heard, if you've been listening, we have had a couple of jingles going on there, and we've got um, an announcement, you could say, where to find us, Dark City Radio. You know, you find us on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Um, and now that voice is the voice of Dawn. Now, um, well, go on, Dawn. I'll let you actually. Um, if, I don't know if you want to reveal this, or I'm jumping the gun about about. Um... No, I, I'm not going to reveal it until it's confirmed on 100%. Yes, I'm pretty sure that this particular guest will come on, but until I have a specific date confirmed, I'm not going to drop the name just yet so i will keep you in suspense oh, God, I'm, I'm going i'm going to drop your name then don um because uh, oh, you, really oh, yes i am don uh, i mean because i can't handle suspense i'm a traitor i can't do secrets that's why nobody tells me anything you tell me i'll tell everybody you know I, 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 that's drop it at your own risk it's the australian it's the australian um, therapy technique you see if you've got a problem you tell me, I'll tell everybody else, your problem will be out in the open, and it won't be a problem anymore. So, yeah, that's the Australian technique. Um, but what I do want to tell you, what I'm going to tell you, um, is about 
the Saturday, Sunday show, the Dark City show. Now, most of you, if you've been following it or grasped, the Dark City is normally we have a guest on and we have a bit of a topic at the beginning, and then we can dissect and chop it and slice it, uh, and, and down into small manager components or down into rabbit holes. Hey, um, and that's the idea of it. So we can get you lot ringing in, you know, people out there who have never rung in. And if you want to do that via Skype, it's Bob's Backyard. Or you can ring the number, the telephone number, the landline on 0161 298 And that'll put you through to us here. Now, don't think you're just going to come straight through and get on, you know, immediately and start screaming and shouting. If you do, you'll be out quicker than you come in. Um, just mute your microphone when you come in and then we'll just, hello, who are you? Say hello. It's quite easy to do. However, the Sunday show, that's after Dom's show, a two-hour show, um, isn't got that format, you might notice. Uh, it's a two-hour Dark City show. And Dawn's done a couple of interviews in there. And what we're going to do is, that's going to become Dawn's show. We're not quite sure what we're going to call it yet. I think we're going to call it Dark Dawn over the Dark City. But <laughs> I'm mulling it over at the moment. It was just a spur-of-the-moment decision. I want to have a show. Yeah. So yeah, it seemed actually quite natural the way things were working out that, that my show was going to be the nine o'clock to ten o'clock GMT slot um on a Sunday. So as far as I'm I vote, concerned I vote. and as far as everybody else is happy, it's gonna happen. So yeah. I've got a couple of guys lined up at the moment, so Friday, I always have a, ve- a guest, then my show will be on. So, please, if anybody wants to be a guest on the show, has something really interesting to talk about on the show, is a spe- specialist knowledge in anything, or wants to expose something, get in touch with me. Direct message me, Don Dark City on Facebook. Um, I'm actually just creating a YouTube account as well, so you'll be able to contact me everywhere. Um, and you can direct message the page Dark City Radio. You can search that on Facebook. You can search it on Twitter. And uh, we just like to, to let you know that Dark City Show is now looking for another chief interviewer. Um, if you are out there, because <laughs> we were done. We're going to be lost now. We're done now. No, of course, we never lose anybody off the Dark City crew. Uh, and that's the idea. If you do want to uh, join in and have a go, please do. Um, we'll try and warm up um, the crew, and that's like all of us. But, you know, they're not, not I was going to say we don't have all of us all the time. We have our residents, Prisoner and Callie, they're pretty resident now. Um, our Robo Wiki, he's pretty resident, he's here most of the time. And, and to be honest, Paul, um, he's pretty resident now, Paul Luke. He's kind of come along and staying along. And we've got a few others there who aren't as confident, but get on with us. You don't get left out. If it all goes wrong, you sat in a room for people there to back you up. So it, it, it's all right. As you saw today, we, we lost Bob Earthwise within a couple of minutes of the show starting. Um, we managed to delay a little bit. And that worked well. But, you know, it's, it is like a bit of a family when we get up here. It is. And you're welcome to join in with that. You really are. Now, one little bit I did want to mention, uh, what pops into my head, is about debates. Um, it's all right having a debate. But we're not a bunch of debaters. I think this has been misinterpreted by some people and that we actually want to debate. We don't want to debate. We're not. We're not interested. It's not that we won't debate. Of course we, we will debate. But it's not about going round and round in circles and never coming up with a solution. Um, it isn't. We're not master de- debaters. As, yeah. as we've been <laughs> Some people might have called us. Stay on with the pronunciation of that. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we're actually here for the for the conversation and for the seeking of solutions, not to debate the ideologies or anything like that. But you know, just to share with each other or, or, or some time and. Um, some experience. What we've and, discovered from our own experience yes. is the best thing, because that's always the most reliable information that you have, is it not? 
not not all this stuff that you read this place or you saw on this YouTube or this Facebook or anything, but your own experience. This is the only only reliable news that you've got really. And if you can spread that around, and we then we get start to get a feel of what's happening in the big world around us because we know what happens in our little space we're well aware of that we know how we get on with the authorities and the police and Mm -hmm. and so on and it's important wherever you are and whatever experiences you're having as well to share those with the community and then we can all find solutions and ways forward and find our strength our power that seems like a plan to me (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, me too. Go on, Bob. No, I just say I was just agreeing. It seems like a plan to me too. It is, it it is, isn't it, Bob? There's no doubt about it. I mean, the lady you you had on your your show today, um, you know, um, I I really, it really buzzes me when we've got people who have had action. Um, Really does. I mean, sometimes these actions do work, and sometimes they don't work. But even so, they're 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 my heroes. They're, They're the people that. You know, they, they encourage me to go on and do things. You know, um, we should always take the encouragement for those people. Always. You know, like I say, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but they have actually stepped out and actually had a go at doing something. They have actually integrated some k- kind of change. So, yeah. Well, it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work because that's all a learning for everyone else as well. That's it, exactly, Bob, yeah. And we inspire each other, don't we? We learn from each other and we inspire each other. So if we keep on sharing our stories and we keep the airwaves of Dark City open for anyone to call in to share their experience, then, you know, we, we're, we're helping, we're helping each other. That's fantastic. Well, it's your radio, Dark City Radio. It's yours, it's not ours, it's yours. And and you can call attention to your issues as well, as long as they're not personal issues. Your personal issues you can deal with personally. But if you've got issues with the system or issues with what's happening around you in the in the world, then yeah, get on to us and get get some airtime and some yeah. support, encouragement. Community. Yeah, well, like I said, the um, let me have a look at his thing here. I'll get his name right. I know it was John Smith. Um, he's uh, over in Liverpool. Spoke to him today. Uh, he's kind of been gone to a few of the meetings, Truth Juice and stuff like that, and he's been listening to uh, Merseyside Radio. Um, and basically, he's heard. I can't remember which show he heard. It could have been uh, Dom's show. It might have been with Charlie Beach and. Uh, he contacted me by email uh, yesterday. Uh, I contacted him this morning by telephone, and today he was visiting us at uh, Ashton Allotment Action on the Action Day. And that's how quick it's moving. Um, it really is. It's another news program somewhere who wants to come along. So, yeah, if you do want to do this, please let us know. Uh, if you are out there thinking about it, um, you know, I'll take a step. Whatever it is, I mean, I'm not just saying with us here in the radio, you know, you, that is included, of course. Um, but if you're thinking of doing something, um, you know, you're thinking about going out and, and planting a few, you know, vegetables in your in your local in your local hanging baskets. The council keep filling up with flowers, you know, because it looks nice. You know, people need food, not flowers. And flowers are very nice, yeah. Um, talk to the permaculture people; it's all part of it. But you know, if if you think you're in that pocket full of seeds, or becoming the secret potato planting ninjas, uh, we do have training camps coming up for uh, potato planting ninjas in the summer. Have a go. You know, I, I don't mean you know go out and be destructive. Go out and have a go at something creative. They're shutting this down all over the place. We've heard on Bob's show, the Resistance News, on Saturdays earlier today. And well, not just this Saturday, but the, the, the last one. And, you know, they, they, they're shutting them down. They're, they're closing down uh, art centres. If it's creative, you can you can pretty much you can well you can pretty much guarantee it's either under the axe or it's struggling for funding. This creativity again seems to be something that's demonised in in the 21st century. Um, divergent thinking. I say if you've listened to me before, rant on. 
Um, diverge, as far as I'm concerned, without divergent thinking, we wouldn't have got anywhere, nowhere at all. We, we, didn't, we wouldn't have even worked out about the basis of agriculture. We wouldn't even, we wouldn't, nothing, nothing at all. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know now. Um, we've got to come up with alternatives. Now, an alternative means it's different. It, it doesn't mean it, it's going to hurt you. Uh, and if you have got an alternative to, to the solutions on Earth, and it involves hurting other people, then that's not an alternative. That's already going on. So that's not an alternative. I've got a creative alternative. It may destroy... All these, all these growers, all these growers are, are growing weed at the moment. They're very careful uh, to, to have female plants. I think we should just take a season off and, and grow for seed. So we get a ton and a half of seed and just send yeah. around sacks of seed to everybody and everybody can spread them everywhere. And we can end up with weed all over the planet. And then we've got fiber and then we've got all the stuff that we you need. Weren't, and you, weren't, you weren't living in this country when that happened, were you? And you went down the train lines and, and destroyed everything. You weren't here, were you, Prize? It's been done before, mate. You know, I think it was Paraquat was used. That's why you... you just, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was an idea they got on the trains and they started they started casting the seed out of the windows of the trains. I will do it again. There's no reason not to do it again. Mm. There's more of us now. There's more we're of more us. We're aware yeah. and we know what's what. No, just chemically kill it all again, bro. You know that. That's all right. That's all right. And then we'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll talk to the ones with the spray cans and, and the, the spray bottles, the poisons, and we'll explain what they're doing and what we're doing. Do you know, we had a chat to my teacher in, in, in India. Actually, he wasn't in India at the time. He was in Switzerland. But um, we explained that, you know, they'd come come along and, and nicked our van because we refused to pay tax on it. And he said, jolly good. Go out and get another one and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I actually... I actually it's just um, after again and again and again. I think it would be a again. completely irresponsible action. Um, to go and cast um, cannabis, uh, indica ross, indica <laughs> I think it would be a completely irresponsible action, in my opinion, to go and cast indica or sativa seeds um, uh, randomly everywhere. Um, I agree. It, you know, it's, I, it's, it's wrong that northern lights was developed to thrive in a northern climate. That yeah. should never have happened. Yeah, yeah. If if they <laughs> if they had northern light seeds, those things you've got to be careful with those because you just throw them anywhere and they grow. <laughs> you know, they don't have to be indoors under lights or anything. You know, apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. No, so I'm actually quite serious about this project. I don't think. Uh, I mean, I'm not being flippant. It is a completely irresponsible action. But we're talking about. We talk. No, you, you're joking about it. I don't. You, you might think I am, but I'm not. I'm being serious. I think that is completely irresponsible. You'd have children. You know, we have children. This needs to be done properly and seriously. Not not just go casting seeds all over the place. That would have a massive negative effect on people who have worked for a long time on on showing people that. People who do grow and use use cannabis on, on medical grounds, or even not, are, are sensible. They're not criminal. They don't have, have have actions that are in danger of the people. So doing that would be a propaganda nightmare. It really unless, of course, we shared the information about the herb alongside the spreading well, yeah. of the seed. We spread the seeds, the intellectual seeds. The seeds of knowledge. They've already been spread intellectually, of course. It's there. There's vast amounts of knowledge of it. Um, I, I don't think there'd be, there's anybody in the right mind now that can't see that, that cannabis can be used to massive advantage medically. Uh, and by that, I mean used in its natural form, not, not chopped up and messed around with. Um, you can look at, uh, again, run for the cure. If you've got any doubt there at all, I'd look at that video and have a look. However, it needs to be done, well, pretty much like, like um, um, Mr. Simpson did it. Is it Simpson? Ron Simpson? Ron from the cure? Uh, Rick, Simpson, Simpson, Rick, Rick Simpson. Rick Simpson, thank you. Um, it, in a way that it's done, you can do it in your own back garden. You can make sure children are, you know, getting all of it. It has to be done responsibly. That's the word, yes. It has to be done. no problem with that at all. Yeah. Cool. Um, Fuck, yeah. we've got another plan. 
<laughs> sure. For all those who want to do it responsibly, they're welcome to. I'd, I'd just like to add that I totally agree with Paul on this, and it would be better to do it with sunflower seeds. And May the 1st generally is Gorilla Sunflower Seed Scattering Day, and everyone ought to get behind that because sunflowers are one of the plants that they use to repair soil damage on landfill and it is an extremely powerful plant for repairing the earth so perhaps sure. if we all got behind sunflowers that might make it work for everyone totally with you bob i mean I i'm not averse to people planting cannabis that's why i said indica or sativa and um, there's also a strain called rubellus i think it's rubellus or rubus um, which is hemp. That's what you would call hemp. It has no properties um, medically or, or it's not going to get you high or anything like that. Um, by all means, uh, cast away. Uh, cast away. And of course, many, pe many people would be totally ignorant of the difference between the two. Um, this is not cannabis. But again, they would use it and they would say it is and it's propaganda. So, I would have to kind of, if it was given a choice, I, I would have to go for the sunflower with you, Bob. Um, I really would. Why not? Because you can't make hempcrete out of sunflowers, can you? You can't make paper out of sunflowers and all that sort of thing. Oh, no, you can make. Now, it's exactly why you're saying sunflowers, and I 100% agree. But um, we, hemp, hemp is, it frees up so many resources for us. It gives us independence from their machine, from their oil lobby. And nutritionally, it's and, extremely yeah, valuable. And med medicinally, and we have to champion it as well, and so yeah. I am. Yeah. Well, of course. They both of them side by side, you know. You can grow hemp in, in, in the UK, of course, if you're licensed to, do, to grow it. Um, this is the same as you have to now go and get a license for tomatoes. Uh, or you have to get a license from anything else. This is basically, in my opinion, uh, because it's so difficult to distinguish between the two plants for them. Of course, if anybody actually would know, it, this is the difference between looking at a Chihuahua and a St. Bernard and uh, a, a, a Greyhound uh, and insisting they're all exactly and identical. Um, they're not. And they're different. Um, they belong to the same family, but they have completely different properties. So yeah, um, I, I would leave it to one side if I were you. I, I would go with, um, I, I think we should promote uh, as much as we can hemp. I wouldn't buy hemp products. Uh, and I would insist that you want um, UK produced hemp products. Uh, hemp is grown in vast quantities. Whoa, what's uh, going on? That was, the that was a, just a bit of static from Dawn, I think, there, no worries. Um, Apologies. Yeah. No, um, I just wanted to ask quickly, Rupert, are you around? We seem to have lost Rupert. No, we haven't. We, call, we, but... haven't we haven't done. We checked with Rupert earlier on whether he's on the call or not, and he, he didn't come forward. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's away. He's not at the computer. Okay, that's all I had. That's all I wanted to see at the moment. <laughs> If I have anything worthwhile saying, I will chip in. <laughs> Carry on. I lost my train of thought completely. I, <laughs> I know we were on Indian hemp, but I got a bit lost then. Um, so anyway, you did bring a point up about hempcrete. Uh, of course, there are many other fibrous plants that can be used to make uh, a fibrous concrete, uh, not just hemp. I mean, hemp is brilliant, don't get me wrong, and I'm not knocking it, and there is nothing better for it. But if we can, let's not. You know, if it's difficult for us to get that, um, I'm then hearing, use. I'm hearing what you're saying, I think. Let, let you know. Let's not stop with the idea of, of using plant fibres uh, in concrete. Uh, I could completely go for that. There's, there's even more. I've even looked at whether we could use the the soft rush we've got growing here in Ashton. But I remember my point now. Um, hemp is grown all over the world all over the world in vast quantities and China is what a massive producer of hemp um, and, and believe it or not is exported to Australia a lot of it. Um, there is in, in Australia they can have hemp 
cloth, but they can't even have hemp products, uh, hemp face cream and so forth. Still banned. Which, again, to us, this is ridiculous. Mm. A ridiculous scenario. However, um, if we can grow hemp in, in England, then we should stop buying it from outside England. Don't buy it. Um, because, um, to me, then, then, if we don't buy these products, we're not allowed to have here in this country, then we don't import them. By importing them, we're actually playing their game. We really are playing their game. a monetary system which enslaves us. Let's not forget that. Well, a, a, a hemp um, product can be bought, um, produced at good quality. I'm sat here wearing a, a hemp hoodie now. Um, in this country, it'll cost you 35, 40 pounds. Um, uh, in a producing country, it'll cost you less than five pounds. And now that's most of that is because of the transportation um, and the taxes that are involved. So again, we are being literally um, being being screwed over where we can produce that in literally our, our own backyards. Now, I'm not saying that you, you start growing hemp in your backyard to make jumpers out of them, of course, um, but agriculture, growing hemp in Britain could actually rejuvenize, rejuvenize, um, rejuvenate um, the agriculture um, within the country and, and give the farmers back. In my opinion, the farmers do need to be, if anybody needs to be supported, and I don't necessarily agree with supporting, you know, but if anybody does, then it's got to be agriculture. Without agriculture, we starve. You know, forget the banks, forget the, the fancy goods and all that, right? Okay, I'm not saying don't have them, but look at the basis of them. That, that, that farming structure with inside England has been broken down more and more and more. So, yeah, we do need to look at that. Uh, on, on, uh, all of us. All of and, us. And there's farmers actually being paid not to grow food as well on yeah, the field. Yeah. And that must be heartbreaking and soul destroying for them. It's got to be. You know, it's like the policeman who joins the police force and then finds out he's not serving the people. It's going yeah. to rip you apart, isn't it? You know, the, the yeah. nurse who's worked in nursing to find out the drugs that she's actually prescribing are more damaging than, than the conditions that they've actually got. It's got to be demoralising. It really has got to be demoralising. You know, my heart and my compassion goes out to anyone um, that put them in the service of their, who would put themselves in the service of their brothers and sisters to find out they've become the persecutor of their brothers and sisters. It really does. It's a hard journey you're going to have to make. Um, but one we will make. Um, we will make. If I can do it, um, you know, I'm sure you lot can do it. And I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. So, um, what have we done? We've got about five minutes left. Uh, we've gone down a few rabbit holes. We've got some cracking, uh, get, we've got a cracking host coming up uh, in our dawn. She's becoming a full time host on her own show. And I'm really buzzed about that. Um, we've met some brilliant people over the week. Uh, and coming later in the week was our Miles, um, who's turned up our Miles. Look, he's a member of the family already. I've only, I've only spoke to the guy for about an hour. It's just that feeling you get, isn't it? Or it is for me, anyway. Uh, when you know something's going to flow right. Um, I don't get. I only met him about two minutes before you last night. So great, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it great? Um, mm -hmm. So one guy who's not with us, uh, who will be appearing, who's been channeled by Rupert, who we've not heard, which is is, is a shame because he always makes us laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what's happened. Um, but you will hear on the jingle out there. There's Vosto who's put that together, and uh, yeah, we uh, we have to thank Vosto um, for uh, for Miles his his, his presence with us. Uh, and also yourself, Don. Um, you know, good show. You are allowed to talk about your guest who's coming on. You've had a bit of a joke in the chat room about it. You are allowed to talk about your guest who's coming on tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was just waiting for a moment to get in to say. Um, tomorrow, I will have a guest on who's going to be coming on. Nairis Titchener. Um, you mentioned him again in the show. She's going to be coming on to talk about permaculture. Um, so if you have any questions to direct for at Nairis, then please direct message me, as I've already said, at Dawn Dark City on Facebook. Um, I have also a YouTube, which I am in the process of working out. So I'll give you the YouTube. Anyway, she's going to come on to talk about that. Nine o'clock to ten o'clock GMT tomorrow night. And yeah, that's it. 
So after that show, you've got the Dark City show as normal, where you can ring in, you can ask questions and stuff like that. Um, that might start a bit earlier, you know, we, 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 we don't, um, you know, depending how it, how it goes as usual. But after the, the um, after Dawn's Hour, then you can all dive in. Now, look, remember that, that <laughs> that's kind of gets quite busy then. Okay, so if you want to get in on that, do do me a favour and let let me know you do want to beforehand, and then I can kind of at least have an idea of who I'm who I'm pulling into the calls, um, because we've got then um, Vin uh, Vin James. Uh, he does the simulcast earlier on. Don't get put on because if it's American. I know we've watched a few people who don't seem to like, but just it's good stuff, right? And then Vin comes on Vin James. Now, hopefully, they'll have got their issues sorted out technically, and that'll run a bit smoother this week. But no worries. If not, that's what it's about, ironing out the problems. Uh, and then after that, after Vin James at seven, we've got Dom on. We don't know who Dom's guest is yet. Um, we haven't heard this week, but it's normally somebody pretty cool. Um, or if not, we're, we've decided we're all going to interrogate Dom for two hours. Um, that might be fun. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Dom. It was a joke. Uh, I have to be careful to let people know when I'm joking now. Uh, and then, of course, Dawn will be on with her interview um, you know, with the uh, um, aquaculture. Now, she'll be quite Jersey. interesting. Um, she, runs, she runs a group, uh, Sandwell and Birmingham Permaculture Group. Um, so, yeah, yeah she's going to be talking up. about that. She's going to be talking about lots of things like activism and whatnot that uh, she's involved with and she's been involved with the council and whatnot but we'll go into that tomorrow night um so yeah it should be a good good interview good night um yeah so just direct any questions towards me for her thank you yeah if you could do that it is important otherwise we can end up getting them a bit lost and we do want if you want if you want to ask something that is um i've already got some questions i'm going to ask her but if you have something to contribute yeah, then please let us know, um, like I say, uh, as quick as you can. Um, and that's really cool. Don't don't try and ask us questions after the fact. It don't work like that. No good. Anyway, that was the Dark City Show. We're all done. That's the time up. Uh, we'll give you uh, a little bit of that jingle. Oh, I'm not allowed to play that one. They won't let me play that one yet. <laughs> They've got to, I have to make sure I get the right stuff. Uh, we'll give you the boss stuff. Uh, no, I can't have that one because that's got the name Dawn in it as well. This one hasn't. Uh, here's our Vosta with a jingle, and uh, we'll go back to your playlist. Thanks for joining us, folks. This is not our radio. This is your radio. Dark City Radio. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. So if you want the truth, go to Dark City Radio. Yup, Dark City Radio's on. All sorts going on on Dark City Radio. Man, you watch the news, you get the impression you walk out your door, you're immediately going to be raped by some crack addicted, AIDS infected pit bull or something, some horrible CNN story, you know. I think the world's falling apart out there. You feel that way? Do you watch this shit? Is gladiators too violent? And what are we doing watching this? Is it really good for us to watch? Is it too violent? Give everyone in the audience a pistol. There you fuckers. See who comes out of line. You know, I'm tired of this false, fucking sanctimonious morality about life. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Fuck you. They want to kill each other. I'm filming it. Surely there's things you could be doing with your time that would be more productive. What do you think, huh? It's about fear. It's about their fear, not our fear. We know how we want to live. We know how to clean up this planet. We know how to 
uh, create new medicines and new foods and uh, a new life, restore life to this planet. But their fear gets in the way. Their fear is that somehow their culture is going to be lost. And because of that, they put a gun to every one of our heads and they say, you will be this culture. You will not be any counterculture. We will find anyone that tries to create a cannabis culture. We'll do everything we can legally to destroy them. And if we can't do that, we'll find illegal.